What's up, everybody? This is G-Man with another session of, with the Frag Illuminati. Today, we'll be talking about how to store your fragrances, how to keep them fresh, how to extend the life of them. So just hang tight. We'll be back in a second with the rest of the crew. Trey is on the track, 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 track. Everybody, you can uh, reach another I, week with we uh, Frag yeah. Illuminati. Uh, yeah, we live, Dre. We got our illustrious panel sitting around the group. We're going to let them say a shout out to everybody before we get kick this thing off. What's up, fellas? What's happening? What's happening? What's good? What's good? What up, though? What up, though? Yeah, see, we all, we all here right before Halloween. Before I, I get started, let's let's let's. Uh, I challenge everybody to get out and do this. Get out and vote. It does mean something, but that's not the topic of our show. I voted yesterday, but what we're going to talk about today, we're going to talk about how to store your fragrances. There's all manners of doing it. There's all ways that people do it. Um, for some people that may know, some people may not know. Some fragrances they have a shelf life and they have expiration date, just like you buy your bread. That there's an expiration date on it. That's not true with all fragrances. Normally, uh, and I'll give you an example. This Latafa, it has it has a born date and end date, and I'm not talking about born date like in beer, but it has a date, production date and an ending date. This one expired in 22, which is this year, but I've only had it a couple of months, and it's just as fresh as anything else. So how you store your fragrances, it matters all, all it makes all the difference in the world. Uh, a couple of things you, you want to do is make sure that you keep the cap. If you have a cap on yours, keep the cap on the fragrance. Don't spray the fragrance. Don't shake it up. And I'll let Eric explain why not to shake the fragrance up in a little bit. But don't shake it up because that's going to further dilute it. You'll also find that... Um, you want to keep it in a climate control area. And when I say climate control, keep it away from direct sunlight. Some people store theirs on the dresser. Some people store theirs in the drawer. Some people store theirs in a tub. Some people store theirs in these beautiful boxes and they come with cases and they're, they're beautiful and they're functional and they do work. But the real question should be is how reasonable are they? Because I have mine in the case just for this presentation and this session, but in the end, I take them out and I put them all on the shelf. The reason I do that is because of proper, because the storage is limited. So I don't have shelving big enough to house all these things and put them all on the same counter. So I do take them out the bottle. Uh, another thing you have to be mindful of is that you have to keep them out of areas where the uh, there's moisture in the room. Um, in Texas, we don't routinely have um, have basements, but it, I've researched and found that basements are not good to store your fragrances because in basements they're normally humid, and so the humidity affects the the product that you have that you're being that you're storing. So climate control makes a difference. Um, whether you're using a niche or whether you're using a, uh, or, or a designer, um, whether it leans more toward a synthetic versus a oil-based fragrance, it makes a difference. The longevity makes the difference. Uh, your designers that, which are more synthetic, they have a tendency to, to go away a lot faster, go dull or flat. Um, another thing is that just because your fragrance changes colors doesn't necessarily mean this out, it's out of date or worn out. Some of your light scents or your light fragrances within, because we, we all know these fragrances are made up 
of products, basically uh, flowers, things like that, that, that are earth made of earth products. And so they do age over time. It's just like you take a flower, all you're doing with the flower, you get fresh roses, you put them in a vase. There's some things that you can put in that vase to keep them, uh, extend the, the, the longevity of them, but in the end, they're going to die. Same thing with the fragrance. What we're trying to do is extend the life of them so we can get the most use out of them possible. <coughs> Another thing I found out that there's um, a shelf life on an average between three to five years on a fragrance. And that's not specifically to um, niche versus uh, synthetic or designers. That's just in general, overall, there's a three to five year uh, span or life to the fragrance once you use it uh another thing is you can buy a fragrance and i've done this i can buy a fragrance that i had years ago and it smelled like a certain way and i just thought it was glamorous thought it was the best thing around and then i go back and try it now doesn't doesn't smell the thing smell the same um you become disappointed because a lot of times you have realized your nose is matured you're matured the things that you like from yesteryear you may not like now so with that being said, I'm going to ask the guy, starting with uh, Andre, how he stores his fragrance. Oh, uh, I just put all mine in the drawer. I got uh, in my dresser, I got a spare space. I just put everything in there. It keeps it, keeps it out of direct sunlight. Well, not that it's going to get any sunlight anyway, but keeps it out of sunlight. And then really just more of or less of a risk of getting damaged by me being clumsy and bumping into it. So uh -huh. I just put mine in there. Um, this seemed to work for me all this time. I've actually had, shockingly, and I've told somebody else this, I don't know exactly how it all works because I had a bottle of Polo Green, or Polo Number 3, whatever it was, and I had that sitting in the car for about a year and a half. And it, I went back and sprayed it one day just out of curiosity because I left it in there and I forgot about it. And it actually still smells good. So I don't know how all this stuff works. And it could just be because I had it in the center console, so it didn't really change uh, temperature that much. I don't know. But, um, yeah, that's pretty much all I do. And it could be the, the, what, what the, what the uh, fragrance is made of, too, the elements within the fragrance. That, too. Which is... I, I would have thought that it had a lot higher alcohol content, which it probably did, but probably. for some reason it didn't it didn't die out on me. Not as uh like some I think I had what was it? Blue Day Chanel E D T. That one died out. I mean that always sat in the house. So I guess it really just depends on the the makeup of the fragrance. Uh -huh. Bernie? Um, with me, um, I don't keep my fragrances in a box. I kept them in the boxes initially, but I just ran out of room. So what I started doing is the box, the fragrances that I think that I may sell down the road that's rare. I may keep the boxes for those. For the ones that's not as rare, I kind of like dispose of the box. I keep it out of direct sunlight. I keep it in room temperature. And um, I rotate them around a lot, not just letting them sit. And so far, I haven't had any issues yet. I but think I don't keep my stuff in the box yet. Um, you know, I don't keep my stuff in the box like other people do. I think I think the biggest threat you have, Bernie, is keeping your daughter out of your stuff. <laughs> yeah, <that's true. laughs> She's tearing a hole in that blooming rose. Man. <laughs> <laughs> hole you had to go ahead and order another one, huh? Yeah, man. Yeah, she's tearing it up, man. <laughs> I'm sorry, bro. I just had to throw that in, man. I couldn't help it, man. <laughs> what about you, Eric? Um, well, right now I have a nice shelf that I keep in my bedroom that um I have a couple of shelves that I keep in my bedroom that I store my fragrances on. Didn't always start out that way, so they've made their way. Um they made their way to the shelf from the dresser and on that and even when i had them on the shelf i used to put them in their boxes and like bernie said um i do i don't store them in my boxes but i do keep the boxes just in case 
um it's it's like it's like sneakers in that regards it's, it seems like the bottle is worth more if you try to sell it and it has its box right and so um i keep the boxes for that reason but i don't display them with the box because of what you said um storage capacity right and so um my room the way i have my shelf situated is away from the sun right um away from the sun and um I, I, my room is is set up to the way where i don't get a lot of sunlight coming into there so and um and i uh and it's not directly near a um a heat furnace or a um a vent so um i store them and that's how i store mine but yeah I did at one point before I knew what was going on, stored them in the bathroom. I never had an incident with um with uh fragrances going bad, but but this is when I was a pup in the game and you don't go in the game knowing you know every day. So yeah, I stored them in the bathroom. But what 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 about the refrigerator? Has anybody ever stored the chemical the uh, fragrance in the refrigerator? I have not. No, you laugh. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I would hope you wouldn't. I hope you wouldn't get a pool refrigerator to store your fragrances in. That's nuts. No, I have areas. bought. I have bought fragrances from like a. Um, I bought those fragrance oils from those. Uh, um, Africans. Africans, right? And they do tell you to store them in the freezer for a couple of days. They tell you that. Oh, really? When you buy them. Mm -hmm. Why? Why is that? Because same. From what I've researched, oils, uh, the more oil the fragrance has, the less you have to be concerned about uh, its exposure or it turning from what it is. Mm -hmm. Now, he didn't say keep them in there. He just said before you, you know, get started using, put them in, the, put them in there for a couple of days. Um, uh, Did he say why? It? keep them in there for a couple of days he said it's it's part of the maceration process okay. right and okay. so and you know i mean i i couldn't tell the difference either way i've stopped buying oils a long time ago so um you just well, didn't like them i'm sorry i couldn't hear your question you just didn't like them what just didn't like oils yeah no, I mean, I just, um, when I bought oils, it was a while ago, I bought oils because I didn't have access to the actual um, perfume or the actual uh, fragrance. So once I got into the habit where I started getting access to the fragrance, there was no need to get the oils. Oh, so when they weren't really name brand oils, is what you're saying? They were name brand oils. They were. And in mo in most, that's how I got introduced to. Uh, I got well, y'all. Y'all laughing. I'm just. I'm just asking, man. Right. They over there cracking up, Eric. I'm just asking a serious question, man. I got. I got introduced to Issey Miyake and um, I got introduced to Issey Miyake and um, uh, John Paul Gaultier Lamal through oils, right? And um. And yeah, and those oils at the time, a little uh, 10 milliliter oil would cost you about 10 bucks, you know, not knowing at that time, this was 97, I'm still a young cat, um, you know, $80, $90 for a full bottle was a little bit out of my price range at the time as a young cat. But um, as, like I said, as I started getting at, at being able to access the full bottles, was no need to buy the oil. Okay. Now, now the shelving. Um, I know Andre, you looking and Eric. I've seen, I've seen your shelves. Um, and and let me before I ask this question to go into it, I'm gonna say hello to the ladies, Laquita, Natasha, Denisha. Hello, ladies. Thank you for joining. And everyone um, else that's online that's not commenting, you can drop a comment if you want. But thanks for joining too. You're fully agree. I'm gonna think because uh, um, Laquita asked, asked a question. I I want to answer. I want to. Uh, I was gonna ask too about the uh, whole bathroom situation. Oh yeah. Uh, why yeah, it's not yeah. good to store your fragrances there? Because I, I I wondered that myself. Well, it's it's the moisture and the heat. 
combined. And then when you're in the bathroom, a lot of times if you're in the bathroom, you're taking a shower, you're turning hot water on and it's heating up the room. So that's oh, going to yeah, change the temperature right. of the fragrance. So like mine, I keep mine in my closet. And the only time I go in the closet, of course, is when I'm going to get something in and out of it. It's climate controlled. Uh, there is a vent, but it didn't it didn't get too hot in there or do, does yeah. it get too cold. So it's probably maintained and to extend the life. But another thing we have to uh, think about is the level of shelf that you're putting them on. If you're in a room where there's a, a, a air duct and you have them on the top shelf, then there's a likelihood it's gonna be more exposed to that heat than it would be at the lower sh- lower levels of those shelving. Now, since mm-hmm. we're talking about shelving, um, and we're 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 all out, we're all where we don't have kids, little kids running around to knock our stuff over, uh, or that we don't have that threat. But but for people that do, I've seen these floating shelves, and me after dropping a bottle of Clive Christian, I'm so daggum nervous, man. That wouldn't even be a thought for me. Yeah, ma. But is that something you guys would consider the floating shelves, the ones without the rails on the outside? Because I'd have to have rails and everything on it. Nah. Nope. I tried it, but um, nah, I'm not doing that. It's too, it's too risky. Mm-hmm. And I know me, I'm, I'm, I'm a klutz. I mess around bumping to it, just trying to uh tie my shoe with something. Nah, I'm good. Well, that'd be another excuse to go buy something else, man. No, nah, I don't need no more excuses. <laughs> <laughs> I've yeah, got, I got mine in the corner out the way. <laughs> so it's no excuse for anybody to bump into it or this, that, and the other. The only thing I that I could see happening is me opening the door real fast and hitting it, but there was no reason for me to do that. So yeah. No reason and for I don't do I don't that. think um if if you guys were to recommend, if you all each one of you had to recommend uh, storage, proper storage for their fragrance, for people asking, um, how do I store my fragrance? What would you what would you what would be y'all's recommendation for them? I mean, I, I know it's individual, but what would be based upon your experience and the amount of uh, volume that you all have in fragrances? What would be y'all's opinion? What would you recommend to them? I mean, for me, um, what I plan on getting is a uh, is gonna be this big bookcase from IKEA that has uh, two glass doors on it. I'm just gonna use that. That way, I get no unwanted fingers on my bottles, which I shouldn't have to worry about that. But even even if the ghosts come through, ain't nobody touching them unless you open that door up. Ain't happening, Jack. But I'm saying so a lot of people with the, um, with the, I think a lot of people have like bookcase shelves. Yeah, I know I do. Mine is mine's built in. It is a multifunction. You can put shoes and everything else on it. So I just use one or two shelves to do that with, and it's pretty deep, so I can get a lot of them on the shelf. So I'm lucky in that aspect. Eric, what about you? Your recommendation in and burning? Well, at my um thing is it all depends on what your level is in the game if you one of those people that have 10 to 20 fragrances if you have a um dresser that you have space that's out of the area of heat and sunlight that's fine right but as you start to graduate and um get higher up into this game and you start to accumulate fragrances and you'll start to spend money on fragrances like what we have and um you with the Clive, Clive Christians, Dre with the Rosia and this, that, and the other, you want to kind of garnish them with some type of respect where you have some type of res- uh, display that um that uh represents them properly. Um a bookshelf, you know, you know a bookshelf, some people like to put a, a bookshelf that has like a glass door that uh and closes opens and closes and then use the little led lights underneath each shelf so they can you know get the little proper lighting without it being sunlight um those are neat i mean those are fine something that's like six inches off the ground and like you said probably no more than five feet above uh five feet up in the air you know 
something of that nature. Um, so when you say six inches off the ground, what's what's the premise of that? Well, um, protection. More so static, you know, okay. in um, dust, just that and the other, and just keeping it, and you know, just I guess keeping it off the floor. You know, just like just keeping it off the floor. I don't have a rhyme or reason or just that and the other, but just like something that just keeps them from being on the floor collecting the little dust, you know. Mr. Burning. <laughs> he zone out on me, man. <laughs> you talk about work all the time and he's like, Don't call on me, teach. Don't call on me. <laughs> Okay. Hey, Bernie. Yes, sir. You dodged out on us, man. Say again. What about you? Recommendations um, for fragrances. What I would recommend is whatever the season is, those are the bottles that I probably would have out. As long as in room control, not direct sunlight, and in an area that you won't bump into them, kind of like what Eric was talking about earlier. And the stuff that's out of season, I would keep them in the box, in a drawer. That way it can help conserve space, but at the same time, you know what I mean? Um, I originally started out that way, but now, because I got rid of a lot of stuff, I don't have to. But if you want to kind of work on space, I will keep them in a the box tucked away in the drawer. And for that season, those bottles are the ones I will have out. And then when the seasons change, then I just switch. And that way you're protecting it. You're storing them properly, and you also still kind of conserve space. I heard that before, Bernie. Anybody else do that? Put their fragrance. I started out that way. At the, you know, yeah, I started out that way. And after a while, I was like, I got tired of doing it. I just said, I'm just leaving all of them out now. Yeah, they're they're from what I researched that they're recommending. For example, that's one good way. You know these little tubs, plastic tubs you store your shoes in? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They're saying box box them up in the original boxes and put those in those tubs and put them in a corner away from everything down low. And they said that that helps to maintain the uh, integrity of the fragrance too. I don't, I don't do it because I just keep mine on the shelf. Now, Eric, why, why, and just, just curious, can you tell me, why should people not shake a shake a fragrance up? Well, um, we talked before about the layers of um, the concentration in each fragrance, right? So, uh, each fragrance has its, you know, has its own responsibility as you spray it. When you spray it, what you're going to smell at first is that top note, and then you're going to spray. Um, and as it starts to dry down, you're going to get the mid. And once it's completely burnt, completely dry you're going to get what they call the base scent. And the best way to experience a fragrance is allow that fragrance to be able to um, be able to uh, go through all those changes, right? And when you're shaking it up, you're killing those molecules, you're killing that, you're killing those molecules, you're killing those layers, and then what you end up with is a convoluted mess when you try to spray it. Now, Denise just says she has, she has a one-year-old and she said that she puts hers on a she let's see i'm going to say no to shelves because she has a one year old she's a bookcase and she has it blocked off and most everything on the top shelf is kept in boxes so she's got a system in place for the conditions she's dealing with to make sure that her stuff stays safe uh ebony said bernie was out there just snoozing man out to get paid sleeping <laughs> on the job <laughs> he's still asleep look at him do <laughs> whatever you uh, need uh, to do, Bernie. Whatever you I'm need not, to do. I'm not, <laughs> I'm not sleeping, man. I'm in a um, a different um, sect of the city where you got to keep your head on the swivel. Oh, uh, yeah. But the show must go on. If, if Dre can do the show on the road, I'm not going to let my job interfere with us doing what we need to do. Uh, but I'm in an area that if I flip the camera, you'd be like, "Hey, man, you might need to get off the air real quick." <laughs> you know, you go back on when you're in a safe, safety, uh, safer area. But we we good. To go back to Denisha's to to Denisha's point, 
And the thing is, is that, you know, everybody has their personal preference on how they're doing everything, right? So what we say is not scripture. What we're doing is having a discussion. So um, what'd you say about scripted? Huh? What'd you say about scripted? Not, no, not scripted. <laughs> I'm saying it's not scripture, right? So this is, these are not Bible verses. So there's not, these are okay. not rules to live by, right? So um, these are not rules to live by. What we're giving you is, is suggestions and what we're doing is uh, giving you best practices and this, that, and the other. What you do with your fragrances and what you, what works for you, works for you, right? And so, no, um, so because I mean, there was some confusion last week when we said something about spraying something on people's clothes, and that's not what we said. We, we, um, what we said was when you go home, uh, I mean, what we said is if you have a new fragrance while you're at home, test it while you're at home. So, test it while you're at home and decide what way it best works for you. Right, not to go home and spray it on your clothes if it doesn't work on your skin, which I have no idea where that came from. But well, I I think Eric, I mm -hmm. think when you were talking about you wear your samples at night, maybe that's where it came from. Mm -hmm. You said at night you'll test. That's when you'll take the samples. You'll test them out mm -hmm. instead of wearing them out in public. So I think it may have that may have gotten intertwined and. Mm -hmm. And the thought process and and mix up because I, I don't I don't understand that we didn't say anything about we did talk about spraying fragrances on clothing, but yeah. that was for the purpose of people wearing it. Some people wear them on clothes, some people wear it wear it on skin. So we were talking about that, but we weren't talking about specifically what uh, you just said was said to you. Right now, um, as far as, and to clarify that. What I'm what I was saying about my samples was um, those are just the only opportunity I get a chance to wear them or sample them is at night. So you know, after I then took a shower, if I don't have nothing else that I want to spray at that time, I might use one of the samples that I got. Yeah, it looks like that's what Ebony does too. She'll sample a fragrance and a layer combination combination at night. Mm -hmm. I'm not. I bought some stuff for layering it, but I'm not quite there as far as perfectionist with the laying process. So mm -hmm. I'm, I'm still a, a student in the learning learning game. Um, I'm, I'm trying to think at the same time. Um, like and subscribe when I, I get caught up in my thoughts. Like and subscribe, like and subscribe, go vote. That's just a filler for me to kill some time to, to uh, think about what it is on my to talk together. I do want to say something real quick because I know there's been a lot of confusion about the truth being told around here. What's actual truth and what actual factual and stuff like that. But what I do want to what I want to do right now is to go ahead and put this out here because i know folks have thought that this day might have been two weeks ago might have been two months ago but this day is actually happening tomorrow and i want to be the first to say it right here on the illuminati we want to wish dre a happy oh, birthday. <laughs> <laughs> hey, man. I need to see the birthday. I didn't know where he was going with that. I was like, man, I ain't Eric, <laughs> what you got going on over there, man? You just not get on public TV and then you want to brass, blast out what's going on, man. You didn't tip us off first. And I need to, I need to see Ray's birth about. certificate, man. Birthday. He had birthday every other week, man. So Eric, it's yeah, hard for me to believe that that's going to be factual, man. Yeah, no, that tomorrow like is that. his actual birthday, everybody. So yeah, do you, it's his birthday. Do you have proof, man? Yeah. Look at me. Ebony say he's 63 tomorrow. Well, he's 63 <laughs> last week. She she knows the age at 63. Mm -hmm. I'll be whenever I have another birthday, I'll decide to be 71. Laquita said happy birthday. Laquita said happy birthday. Mm -hmm. He's gonna have another one tomorrow and and the month next month. So just you know, just 
put uh, etc. at the end nice of little happy birthday. Or something that I was gonna put up, you know, saying happy birthday, <laughs> but it didn't work out. So I'm like, okay, well, let me just go. That's why I was trying to stall a little bit until I found it. But oh well. <laughs> but I mean, this is all I appreciate it. Happy birthday, oh, Dre. The real appreciations. One. Mm-hmm. I'm really is for, it really uh, your birthday, man? Yeah, tomorrow. Tomorrow. Tomorrow is actually <laughs> my birthday. <laughs> That's what yeah, Ebony I'll... said. That. Ebony, Ebony said she should have known it was Halloween. Yeah, but <laughs> <laughs> I, I guess it fits. I, I, I think it fits perfectly. Mm-hmm. So that's my. I think it go along with trick or treat, really, man. <laughs> Not trick or treat. April Fools. April Fools. Oh, same thing. <laughs> <laughs> I, you know what? I think I want to make that one my birthday too, though. I like. I like. I know. I, I know. Have y'all ever seen? We're talking about. Uh, Talk about discoloration of fragrances. Have y'all ever? I know I have Killian, Angel Sharon. It's it's changed colors on me, yeah. and so it's still fresh. But um, have y'all experienced with clear bottles? Fragrances have changed colors. It yeah. I, I got I darker. Have some, I have some that does it on purpose. Um, Triumphal Bacchus. It does it on purpose. It started out light, it it. and now it's a little peach. Once it macerates, it turns into a little peach color. That was oh, it's all it is. It's just a maceration process. Yep. And um and crush on me does the same thing. Starts off real light, and as it macerates, it turns like a little dark. It, it gets a little darker, right? And so, but uh they're designed to do that. And then it's so n- nothing to worry about. No, no, not not in the typical sense. No, not at all. Because I mean, I. I, some people, man, go out and they buy a fragrance. Next thing you know is they've had a six months has changed colors and they start freaking out, especially they spent, you know, quite a bit of money on something for the first time at that level. Say these, now, now, if they, now, there is a problem if they have, um, if they have some and mold starts to grow that color, <laughs> you should probably throw that away. Mold? <laughs> yeah. Just go ahead and throw that out. It's over. It's like storing properly. Oh, Emily made a good point. Uh, but oh, Nellis yeah. do. Uh, she she said general fluidity gold does that, and also vanilla uh, type of fragrances will change colors. I know that that to be a fact. To certain elements within a fragrance, it'll, it'll turn more so than others. The level of the wood based fragrances, oud bases. I don't think you have to too much worry about those uh, because they're not really clear in the beginning. So. Sure. Well, have you ever seen a, um? Have you ever seen something like with um, like Creed Spice and Wood? You ever seen one of those turn on you? Not yet, not okay. yet. Now I did. I did get. Um, I did get when I got my. Um, which one was it? It was the um, white amber. When I got oh. it, it, came to the mail. It was flat, brand new bottle. It was flat. So I called the company and told them, hey, man, this this is flat. And so they did have a good return policy. But what they told me sometimes through UPS and storage, they'll keep them in high, high climates. And I did wait a couple of days for it to try to mature before I sent it back. And it never did recover. So yeah. I mean, I can, do that. That, I can tell you firsthand um, with a lot definitely going like because i know a lot of them have to go through trucking companies to get the stuff delivered so a lot of times if um i'm thinking probably something like that would happen if a trucker or something probably broke down and then they just in high heat so then the, the trailers are stuck because they don't have nobody to come pick it up so it's just stuck in that high heat instead of getting to a storage unit where it's supposed to be or a warehouse it's not you know, yeah. some warehouses are not air conditioned either. Oh no, a lot of them are. Mm. But a lot of times that won't make a difference if they moving them the way they need to be moved. Right. Now, have so you ever had? Have you guys ever had? In, speaking to what Dre is talking about, have you ever had an issue where you received a fragrance when you opened it? It was unusually warm. No, my was when, when, when you received it, it in the summertime. And you get it out of your little mailbox or whatever, it's warm. Nah. No. Hmm. I've had that happen. Yeah, that happened. I had that happen a couple of times. I'm not saying it was hot, like scalding hot, 
but it's either cold, depending on whatever temperature it is. If it's cold, you open the fragrance, it's kind of cold. If you if it's summertime and you get it, it's warm. It's kind of warm. I mean, the the packaging are issue. protecting it from the temperature. Yeah, that's, that sounds like a packaging issue. They need to yeah. pack better. Because a lot of times it shouldn't since it has so many layers. So if it don't mm -hmm. have that many layers, it's probably going to do that. It's just going to go through easily. Definitely if you got it sitting in like a hot mailbox, mm -hmm. it's just all that heat just getting all baked into one. But I haven't, I haven't had that issue. One of the things I've... One of the things I've seen on the forum, people may complain that they get a fragrance and they said it is, it's like, um, it's weak. And then you'll see veterans say, just put it away for a while, let it sit, and then check mm -hmm. on it again. Maybe after it go through that process, you know, it smelled different. And then when I follow those links or those posts and later they come back, they did say it smelled different. So it yeah. is a lot to say that with certain fragrances, don't give up on them right away. You know, like Leonard could tell right off the break that that was flat. But let's say this is a fragrance that is not really flat. Sometimes hold on to it for a few days, let it sit, check back on it again. And then if you don't notice a difference through the maturation, like um, Eric is talking about, then you can go ahead and send it back. But it's a lot of people who have said that they buy a fragrance and they would purposely let it sit for a little bit and then come back to it before they start wearing it. I can tell you one that doesn't work with What's anything that? about Joe Malone. Joe mm. Malone has the weakest performance I've ever seen in my life. Even the X straight. <laughs> now, when you there is no but it is, are we talking about the same yeah. thing? You you said the performance. He's talking about flat. When he sprayed it, it sprayed yeah. flat. Are we no, I was saying like, like let, let it in my head is flat. If something was flat, but I was saying sometimes some people would get a fragrance. And then they would tell, some of the veterans would tell them, just let it sit for a while, let it stay in the box, let it go through its process and go back to it later. You hear a lot about, you know, with Venice, um, certain part from the Marley's. I heard that with certain fragrances, I've seen veterans would tell a newer person, put it away for a while, let it sit, then come back to it. But, you know, Leonard was like, flat is flat. You know, you can let that sit for like <laughs> 10 months. And then, I was like, know, it's not, it's not coming back. Dead. Yeah, now, no uh, you know, Andre back. talked about uh, the Malone joint. Mm -hmm. well, oh, now, I got the one. The, the talk of being in myrrh, I got that one. And it's, man, it's, it's a beautiful scent, but I agree with you, Dre. It's not, it doesn't last, man. It don't last at all. And I just want to, I just, I just want to take the time out to put them on blast for that because I hate it. <laughs> I know, I know it had nothing to do with nothing. I just wanted <laughs> to say it. Let me have it. Stop. <laughs> Did you like the smell of it? Oh yeah, it's it the, the scent is fire, but it yeah. just it don't no last for nothing. But like uh -huh. Ebony said, um with the with the, the batches and stuff, and I know that's that's true with the Venice. Um a lot of a lot of people are getting newer batches. So they're really just coming out, so you have to let that sit and do what it needs to do to be able to perform the way it needs to perform. Because I know Aventus, Aventus comes out with so many batches, it's ridiculous. Yeah. You know what I found help me, though, is um, especially with fragrances that have sat for a minute, you know, I would just, like, especially if they're out-of-season fragrances and you know you're not going to wear them, I would just go spray them anyway. That way it's, mm -hmm. you know, it has it's doing something. It's not just sitting. So if it's yeah. sitting here and you haven't sprayed it in about a month, just spread in the air. That way, the atomizer has gotten some use, and then that the juice is not just sitting there sitting, right? And um, I've, I've I've done that, and that has brought a couple of fragrances back to life. Because I remember telling you that one of my favorites, Forty Knots. The last time I wore it, it wasn't um, it didn't do that well for me. I was like, and I and I think it was a combination of the fact that. Uh, um, maybe I didn't use the right body cream that day. And, um, um, I think my dry cleaners let my shirt sour. So for whatever reason, I was not getting my fragrance. And so, um, getting my fragrance, but I, what I did is I purposely sprayed it again the next day and then sprayed it again a couple of days later. And it was back to 
what I was used to. And so I was like, because mm. I remember telling Dre, I'm like, I think I need to get another bottle of 40 knots because I know it's not 40 knots. It might yeah. be that particular bottle of 40 knots. <laughs> <laughs> I remember you saying that. I just tried that today, too. It, 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 it's, it's decent. Right. Well, I got. No, I can no, tell no, you, I'm not. Mm -hmm. I'm not yeah. spraying mine. I can tell you now, I'm not spraying any of mine in there. I'm going to spray mine on me. <laughs> no, I ain't, I ain't gonna do that, Eric. I ain't, I ain't, I ain't. Yeah, I ain't if I got to spray a ball that's been sitting, I'm spraying it on me because I ain't, I ain't wasting nothing, man. I now, because I mean, more we better know what fumes. you paying for yours. We know what you paying. We for all yours. paying the same thing, man. Don't start that, Eric. Don't start that. <laughs> <laughs> Don't start that, man. <laughs> Mo Bella Fume said her experience with the fragrances are when uh, they first get them, they spray them and then let them sit for a few days longer, and that usually makes them smell better after they've been exposed to the air. See, that's what I'm saying. And I believe, yeah, you see I that, believe that to be true, too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I see that float around a lot. Right. I usually do that. No, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> no, mind. My bad. <laughs> Sorry, guys. <laughs> uh, uh, uh. Which now in the day, Leonard? Scent for the day. Ooh. Ajmal Oud 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 Desire. It's a Oud Bernie Oud baby. Uh, ooh, See it, Bernie. Yeah, the, ooh. <laughs> <laughs> Indeed. That got that Oud. <laughs> that's yeah, a shiny that's, bottle. Yes, yeah, that's, that's my Middle Eastern house, man. Ajmal. So it's it's a good one. It's a good one. Okay, that's what's up. What uh what's the notes on it? I see here. Okay, put you on the no spot. We gotta no, put got you on the spot. Okay. Gonna do it. He said they gonna, gonna make gonna me open it. my bottle. He been <laughs> hey man, he been over there talking to Antoine. That's, that's what that is. Oh, man. Antoine, all he over there talking to Antoine. <laughs> I had the notes right here, man. <laughs> I don't know, Eric. I see you I see your sample. Well, I mean, I'm I'm wondering. Okay, so I just want to know let, what type of you let, I mean, you, um, you let you let the Cowboys a... beat Detroit, man. You got to put me on the spot, man. <laughs> I mean, join the club. You see how they collapsed and lost that game today. But anyway, um, but um, so what stands out about it? Is it a winter scent or is it a summer yeah, scent? How can it be found? It's a, no, it's, it's a. It's a oud based scent, man. So naturally, um, and it's not a mild version. It's not too strong, not too potent. It's blended just right, but it's not one that I would I would wear year round. That is mostly for the colder climates. Just you know, some ouds are well blended, where you can wear them year round. But mm -hmm. this is one that you would wear in the winter winter months. And the longevity, just like any other oud, man. You're talking about six to eight hours easy you know one or two three uh maybe three sprays and you're good for the day uh and sometimes for tomorrow okay so um what else what other type of notes do you smell on it food that's it <laughs> <laughs> Should have thought that <laughs> so we i mean i'm just saying we would never buy a, a fragrance from Leonard at all because he ain't selling the fragrance at all. He ain't letting us know nice. nothing about it. No, <laughs> you, don't, sir. you don't want us in on his uh, on his on his collection. <laughs> you don't want us to have nothing that he got. Mm, he's nothing, don't smell man. like nobody. Mm -hmm. Andre yeah. bought that. He he bought that uh, Joe Malone, and I was glad that he didn't like it because that means he ain't gonna wear it. He's probably gonna get rid of it. Oh and, no, because uh, it's a beautiful scent, man. I'm telling you, it's a beautiful scent, man. Mm -hmm. But it just doesn't. Just, it doesn't last. I was gonna say I just spray it ten thousand times a day. I, I don't care. I just, I just go for it because I'm not about it. So it's mine now. It's getting warm. I fell in. I fell in love with that one, man. I, I was at the sample count, and I wasn't really familiar with Joe Malone. I had never bought anything from him, but I tried yeah, two or three. Me. Yeah, I, I tried two or three of theirs. They had a cypress and something that wasn't the the rep um, tried to get me to try, and I wasn't in love with it. And then she tried that Tonka and Myrrh. And man, that that's nice, man. So I bought it right on the that spot. That sounds good. That sounds yeah, it's good. it's good, man. It's good. 
Like so, if they if they had some lasting power, Jesus Christ. And that's supposed <laughs> to be the strongest one. That's supposed to be like the X straight. The ones in the black right. bottle. Mm. The black label. Well, no, no, no. They just cologne intenses, though. That's all they the are. Intense, yeah, the intense is, a, is the strongest version they have. Yeah, and that's, that's not strong that at all. That's like, no. like under EDT. I haven't yep. had much experiences with Joe Malone's. I went into the mall to smell a couple, but, you know, I went just with the intention of smelling them. But I had already heard about the performance rumors, and so I, I had no intentions on buying but when I, I guess I had smelled so many fragrances that day, I went in and I couldn't smell nothing. So, oh, um, yeah. they, they everything that I smell smells exactly like what the name is. Mm. Like they, they have it down to a T. It's just you don't. And I, you I don't got, like I got hooked when I, the first time I smelled it. I was like, oh, I gotta have it, and I got it. And then thirty-two minutes later, it was over. Mm. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> oh, bro. Hey, man. Oh, uh-uh. That sounds like my experience with Silver Mountain Water. <laughs> man, watch your mouth, man. Watch your mouth. Come on, man. Let's see. You don't let me, punish me now from disrespecting one cent. Now, now you disrespecting <laughs> Silver Mountain Water, man. No, you ain't I, heard about I, mean, I, I might need front. to put my, I might need to j- jump on him, Malaya. Yeah, that's a nice mm-hmm. Hey, Eric, if you ever tried it, see, Desiree just told us what it is. That's what our problem is. We're not doing it right, though. What? Desiree just said they're meant to be layered with their product. We ain't getting the rest of the product. We just getting the cloth. <laughs> see, we we've been jacking up the whole time anyway. Yeah, half doing it. Yeah, so well. Eric, have you ever tried Himalaya? Nope. That's a bad that's boy, ain't it, Bernie? Hmm. Mm-hmm. Man, that's some good you stuff. You gonna tell man. us about it? What kind of notes no. are it? I, I'm scared to ask. <laughs> Look, I ain't gonna say nothing about it. Bernie, Bernie knows about it. That's all that matters. Me and Bernie know. That's all you need to know. <laughs> <laughs> it's over. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But to I'll me, man, up. I'll look it up. I'm gonna try because I I heard a couple other people speak about Himalaya, so I'm I'm gonna. Oh, it's good, man. It's about. Mm-hmm. To me, it's, it's better than Silver Mountain Water. Oh, yeah. Well, Silver Mountain Wall Water, water ain't too. really that much to, ain't much to brag about, so. Oh, Lord, the disrespect. <laughs> the disrespect. I knew he was going to do it. Oh, mm-hmm. Lord. The Silver Mountain Water is just okay to me. It's, it's nothing, ain't nothing extravagant about Silver Mountain Water. Hey, Bernie. I just. Yes, sir. Cut it, man. Cut Eric off the show, man. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what? I, I do, do it, but I don't know how to do it. <laughs> uh-uh. I do want to say this, though. Um, we do have it. I mean, um, Leonard mentioned like subscribing and following the channel. Please do so. And if you do follow the channel, you will go through and you can wa- rewatch the episodes that you may have missed. We have covered fragrance layering. We have covered how do you apply your uh, how to apply your fragrances. We have covered signature scents. So and those are all great episodes. So if you miss those and you still are interested in what we had to say about those, go back and watch. Um, go back and watch. There's some useful information there. And also how to travel with your fragrances, which is and also one. how to travel with your fragrances safely. Yeah, real mm-hmm. good ideas. Mm-hmm. So you, you're right. Mm-hmm. You're right. Go vote. Um, I, I think last week we... man. I voted yesterday. No. So go We're vote. We're not telling you who to on vote for. Note. We're just saying yeah. go vote. That's right. Exercise on the side right. note, Eric, you were saying something about the comments that we can respond to them even after the show. Or have we ever um, found out about that? Um, no. The comments, well, yeah. I mean, as far as the live uh, comments for the live show, I haven't figured out if we can respond to those as of yet. Right now, I don't think so. I thought we could, but I don't think so. Um, but um, for the comments after the show, for people that haven't commented during the live show, if you want to leave comments after the show, the YouTube pro uh, platform leaves a spot for you to do so. 
please do that. It allows people to notice that we are visible and people are being entertained by us. They don't display our, um, we don't, they don't display our live chat. So they don't know the interaction that we're getting. So, right. um, and we can also you know, after the show uh, respond to that. Airs and you want to respond, go right ahead. That, that's, yeah, that, that, yeah, right. What Dre was saying. Mm-hmm. What did Dre say? No, we, we can still say respond to that too. If you, even if you got a question after the show ends, let's go back to the video, leave a comment. We can, we can respond there too. Oh, yeah. We don't want you to it's think not, that we're ignoring you. We're yeah, looking like at more not, ways to make sure that we can answer all of your questions. Yeah, we're not limited to the live. I can always go back and we can we can come through on our personal pages or however we need to and, and respond to you there. Mm-hmm. And another thing I also want to um, put forth is that in a couple of weeks, a few weeks, November 20th to be exact, we will have none other as Mondale as our special guest, right? And the reason why I'm saying it now is to put the word out there because we're going to make a change for that particular show. We're going to yeah. air at 1 p.m. as opposed to our regular 7 p.m., right? And that's to accommodate Mondela's, um, Mondela's coming on to us way from Kuwait, and that's on the other side of the planet. So um, to accommodate for that time difference. <laughs> We are coming on early that day, and that's a special show because we want to talk about <laughs> we want to talk about Mister <laughs> Middle Eastern fragrances and himself by the, by the man himself, and so and that's a show that you do not want to miss. Hey, yeah, I think, on the other I side think of the planet he... though. <laughs> <laughs> So he's all like Black Adam and, and Superman. <laughs> he's, he's, coming a, this he's coming all the way from Mars. <laughs> <laughs> to break this shit down for y'all good folks. Mm-hmm. You did? Mm-hmm. Yeah. He, he's going he's gonna to break down the difference between uh, Western fragrances and the Middle East fragrance. What's the lure of the Middle East fragrance? Why they stand out? What's the differences between the two? Because there are vast differences between what we get in America versus what uh, the Middle Eastern fragrances provide. They have some creative fragrances and they've got yeah. products that we've never seen. And and the guys on the on the panel, they've acquired things that you can't get in the States uh, openly. So he's our man uh, across the water. A very knowledgeable dude. I mean, knowledgeable. And ex- his exposures to fragrances un- unparalleled. Um, he'll post uh, some of the... Uh, events that he goes through and he'll investigate talk with perfumers distributors and all those things so he's got a wealth of information that he's going to be providing to us and i i can tell you uh the four of us on the panel our ears are going to be wide open because of the vast amount of knowledge that he provides and so it if you can tune in make sure you you don't miss that particular show and if you're able, not able to do it live, make sure you tune in because there's a wealth of information he's going to provide to us. And we can all learn from that because he's, he's got so much exposure. And so make sure you mark that on calendar. Make sure that you highlight that and make sure that you get the information he's going to provide to you. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Absolutely. <laughs> yes, sir. What's the top yes, of next week? What's the topic next what week? You gonna, what you going to talk about, Eric? Oh, man, I ain't Eric, talking Eric. about nothing next week. No. <laughs> <laughs> but um, next week, we are talking about fragrance seasons, right? Winter, spring, mm. summer, fall. And what uh, fragrances that are, um, well, I'm not going to say unique, but are, you know, best to wear. Um best to wear on uh on a particular season and while we're talking about that i am going to assign the fellas some homework <laughs> no you're not no you are not jack <laughs> say about to turn up as soon as we cut this camera off. nope <laughs> so, yeah. no homework so, so those it, days are long gone jack well uh i guess the question is what what i'm asking y'all to do is okay so if Bernie can bring his best fragrance that his favorite fragrance that he likes to wear in the summertime. Leonard can wear bring his favorite fragrance that he likes to wear in the fall and Dre the spring. 
Ooh. one fragrance apiece, and I'm going to bring a few of my own. So that's what we're going to be talking about next week. No, man, because see, that, see, you'd be out there trying to figure out what I got for my best for that season. And be out there trying to buy it, man. Like, okay. <laughs> this show I'm the throwaway pistol, G, man. This show I'm the throwaway. Oh, you know, Everything he slick with that, man. <laughs> oh man. I know what Eric, I know what Eric is doing, man. I, I, no. I know what he's doing. I ain't doing that. I bring two or three I wear all season, but I'm not gonna you're not gonna narrow me down like that, man. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> Spring, I hate this season. You said what, yeah, man? Spring. Eesh. I'm gonna figure that out. Mm. I'm gonna bring Silver Mountain water. How about that? Do it, <laughs> do it, and then you y'all gonna stop talking about us why that's the, one of the best. Man, why y'all beating my Silver that's, Mountain water? Man? That's, that's nice Eric, job, man. man. Yeah, it is, man. You know, I got love for Creed, man. That's Eric. That's a lie. I mean, I love. Wait, wait let me get this. Thing. <laughs> see that? Let, let me, hey, fumbling already, man. That, I mean, every time mm-hmm. that I say, every time that I yeah. say that a fragrance is not the best, I get that di- di- with disrespect uh, that I'm being disrespectful or some shit. No, it's only one. It's only one. The why? I was like, you know, but you know, Bernie, you already know where he's going. We already got his feet available. But your homeboy, I'm just saying, Creed is not what it used to be. <laughs> and my experience with my experience with Silver Mountain Water, when I trust me, when I grabbed it out the store, I fell in love. But I'm saying, as soon as I placed that bad boy on skin, and and, and uh, no, nah. I got I had two bottles of it because the first bottle I thought oh. was a fake. And so I went and bought the actual bottle. <laughs> you should have let it sit. I went and let bought a bottle. You should have let it and sit it and go the to the stage. You didn't do the maceration. Oh, hey. man. No. It, yeah, it was Eric, mm-hmm. Eric, you had two bottles, man? I had two bottles. I sold one bottles? to somebody in the brotherhood, but I had two bottles of silver. Oh, damn. Water. He sold somebody some bad juice. <laughs> it was not bad juice. I said I just th- it was actually good juice. I just thought it because it wasn't doing nothing. I thought it wasn't. I thought it okay, wasn't that juice. good juice. So I went to the mall and actually got a a, a regular box. I mean, actually got a mall. Yeah, My first bottle I bought from Fragrance USA. My first <laughs> bottle I bought from Fragrance USA, and I was like, "Well, mm-hmm. this is what this is supposed to smell like." And so I'm like, well, I don't know. So I went to the mall. I actually bought a bottle from Neiman Marcus, both of them, just the same. I mean, I put them on. They smell good for thirty, like Joe Malone's, Joe Malone like about an hour. Then nothing. Then nothing. Hey, hey, Dre. Oh, I see how good. you get him every time. He's sitting there taking you seriously. You get him all the time, man. I see that every time. Neiman got him twice, man, for big dollars. I see how you the get him. Big every- bucks. <laughs> the big box. No, it's a smooth three, four hundred gone, just like that. Come on, man. <laughs> he says smooth. It's smooth. Just all I'm no. saying is I gave Pre the chance. I gave Pre the chance. <laughs> no, no, you, no, you didn't. didn't. You gave Silver you Mountain Water a chance. I was like, you ain't, you ain't, you ain't been through the wormhole yet. You ain't been well, through the wormhole yet. Because, you know, I still well, got about, I still got my eyes on Royal Oud because I love that. Oh, it's overrated, man. It's overrated. Oh, uh, yeah, whatever. <laughs> and I also got my uh, I got my nose on <laughs> Spice and Wood. So we're we going to see how those That's go. overrated, too, man. Uh, yeah, that's that. overrated. He's a, he's a that's overrated. He's a, yeah. yeah, don't get he's don't, don't, don't get that. That's overrated. That's definitely overrated. Yeah, man. Get your bo- get you another bottle of venice of venice and be through with it, man. Who <laughs> green that's venice? what green you do. Tree. Yeah, I don't know. He I'm don't right. need that. You know what? My bottle of Aventus is like down in here, and I probably won't even um fill it up. Yeah, I probably man. won't. I mean, I probably won't get another bottle. I'll probably just stick to um Hachivat. I probably won't get another bottle of Venus. I Hachivat. I know. That's a, a Nishine? That's Nishine. Yep. Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, guys, man. I think we're at that time, man. Like and subscribe. Like and subscribe. Go vote. 
And Eric, again, tell us what we're doing next week or what you're carrying, talking about next week. Fragrance so seasons. We can Fragrance seasons. What y'all wearing this summer? I mean, this fall, this winter, next summer. Well, we ain't next doing no spring. homework, so you on your own, man. I'm going to tell you that now. <laughs> That's all right. I'm going to get my homework. I'm going to get my homework. I'm going to give my homework to Dre, man. Dre said his dog no, his homework when he was in school. <laughs> nope. <laughs> I told I told the teacher mine got teleported. Oh. <laughs> okay. Nah. So you can keep the dog in the nah, mine got teleported away. I don't know what happened, man. I, I flipped in the street and it, it floated away. I don't know what happened. Say, Dre, um, oh, this is another thing. Since we're dropping bombs, Eric. Dre told me that he might be out of pocket next month because he he bought a turkey farm and so he's, he'll be out hunt, hunting turkeys for the season so he'll be hit and miss throughout the month of november so you believe yeah. that one, right here so yeah so what we're doing is because of that <laughs> because of that we're doing because um bernie is going to host the um mondale show so leonard is going to be in dre's spot that week if he can't Host, all right. So, yeah, I gotta get right. these turkeys out to the people for Thanksgiving. So you know how I gotta do. I gotta right. need no brand. Get them prepared. Style, huh? <laughs> <laughs> so if you ever see me in your uh, in your neighborhood, and I'm in a truck, and I just have live turkeys for uh, Thanksgiving, I'm giving out live turkeys for Thanksgiving. Uh, need no brown style. Mm -hmm. you know, gotta make sure everybody eats. Like y'all hey, yeah, you know, right before Thanksgiving, we probably should do an episode about you know what fragrances to wear to Thanksgiving dinner. Oh, I got mine. Like that. I got mine already. I'm wearing that one. I'm, I'm wearing pumpkin. I'm wearing pumpkin spice. Don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> Don't do that. I mean, that's if 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 you're being serious, all that is is I'm not, Am, that's Emma Rogers overture overture man. That's pumpkin spice in a nutshell. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not, I'm not serious, man. <laughs> hey, ladies and gentlemen, like, subscribe, like, and subscribe. Follow us on Instagram. Uh, Eric can say Frag Illuminati, I think is a, is a thing. Follow us on Instagram, YouTube, like, subscribe, spread, spread the message, pass the word on, um, uh, publicize who we are, let people listen to it, give them, give them a little exposure. And, um, uh, I think, I think this is it, guys. You want to, want to close out? Each one of you close to say a word before we go? Nope. <laughs> <laughs> Yo. <laughs> we do. Okay. Yeah, we, we, we out, man.